the women's FA Cup final stage is set. So let's talk about it. First of all, let's address the elephant in the room. I haven't done this in a while and it does look like I've abandoned the channel and that I've completely moved on from doing episodes like this. The reality is undergrad last semester is kicking my butt. <laughs> However, school is wrapping up very soon and we will be back to normal activity with lots of lots and lots of content. But obviously during the hustling of studying, I had to take a bit of a break this weekend and it was all located and dedicated to the FA Cup women's semi-final fixtures. And let me just say, what an incredible set of games here. Spurs beating Leicester 2-1 at their big home stadium in extra time after going 1-0 down, getting the equalizer through Jess Naz in the final minutes of natural time. And then Martha Thomas, the hero of the day, to put in that second goal and send her team to the final for the first time Spurs are finalists for the FA Cup. Joining them is Manchester United who were last year's FA Cup finalists but lost to Chelsea. Ironically they took revenge and defeated Chelsea for the first time ever in a 2-1 victory at home. Spurs versus United in the FA Cup final means that this is the first time since 2005 that the final will not feature a team of either City or Arsenal or Chelsea, which is pretty just wild to think about. So like I mentioned, Spurs are making their debut in the final. United did, like I mentioned, get defeated by Chelsea last year. And so really the winner here is going to be a brand new winner into the FA Cup. I think it has been a little bit, not boring, I wouldn't call it boring. I think certainly the finals have been quite exciting in the past few years, but to see the same teams win it over and over again, um, I think is just not so great for the league. And this is a topic that we can talk about for days and something that I'll stress on hopefully closer on to the date of the final. But this is only to say that I'm super excited. I think the game needed to see a final, a set of new finalists, a brand new winner of the FA Cup um, that's going to be happening at Wembley. I think it's going to be such an exciting game but we're not going to be previewing that fixture just yet that will come at a later date in fact i'll be taking a closer look about the semi-finals today specifically on united quite literally having the best game of the season so far in the game that mattered greatly i think manchester united season has been quite a rocky one and i think the managerial position their assistant head coach from last year leaving to sk brand you've had a lot of physiotherapists and doctors for behind the scene go over to the men's side and it's been quite a bit of a chaotic situation really behind the scenes and off the pitch their contractual situations with players has been notably poor we saw that happening in the summer window where they let go a lot of uh, with players that maybe weren't managed so well very similarly we saw kind of a uh, uh, one would say dramatic scene with Mary Earps. Their performances on the pitch too have been poor. I think I'd be crazy to sit here and say that United actually exceeded expectations last season and are kind of going back to their average normal of what they're expected to the season. Now, by no means was I expecting United to kind of have the same run as they did last year, especially losing a player like Onabatier, who I think was probably the most crucial player in their run last year but they have underperformed I think a lot of the performances that we've seen them put on have been uninspiring they've kind of they've been a lot of confusion on the pitch where it looks like the, the rules of the players aren't clear um, the player management has been questionable and Mark Skinner has faced a lot of cri critical you know backlash and rightfully so I don't think this win kind of stops any questions around his longevity with the club or if he's going to get offered a new contract but I do think it kind of puts questions to what was done differently going into the game than any of the other games before because we saw a different United in that first half. United to win the game needed to start off strong they needed to to try and get a lead early. Did anybody anticipate them going up a minute in? No it was an uncharacteristically just sloppy defending in the back by by Chelsea that you wouldn't occasionally see but I think that actually imposed a bigger challenge for United when they're leading a minute in now they have to hold that lead for 89 minutes which is a tough challenge on its own I'd say in the last three years particularly maybe two Chelsea has kind of conceded their goals early but that hasn't really shaken them off and you see them come back with the barrage of attacks and you know just knock down like four or five goals and that first goal that they conceded isn't so much of an issue but when united put in that second goal in what like their third proper attack in the game that kind of changed the narrative of the game a little bit and really what killed that first half and emma hayes even mentioned it in in her press conference is that united have four 
entries in Chelsea's box. They converted two. Chelsea, on the other hand, had 42 entries in the opposition's box. The storyline when a team goes up against Chelsea is that they have to be clinical. Teams are not going to get, you know, the luxury of having 10 or 15 shots against Chelsea. That's just simply not going to happen. Chelsea are not a team to allow that, regardless of how sloppy or just, you know, off the mark they're playing. And so United needed to be clinical. And the big question around it was that United have not been clinical. United's certain players have not stepped up and they've actually lacked a lot of consistency. Yet players like Toon, who I think have had a quite an underwhelming season, did step up in that first half. Scoring two out of your three shots in that first half is exactly the ratio that you're looking to achieve against a team like Chelsea. Now, even with a 2 0 goal lead, uh, with United's record against Chelsea, they can just sit comfortably and, and lay back and say, yeah, we've got it. And especially when Lauren James got that uh, goal right before the half and you're going into halftime, it's 2 1. Chelsea can very much come out and, and equalize things and perhaps put on a, a third. But once again, I think the storyline continued with Chelsea just not being um, devastating enough, which is something that they're very much known for, is being devastating up top. And just when you look at the amount of blue shirts in the opposition box, it's a bit scary. I wouldn't want to be in Mary Earps' position. Hell no. But Mary Earps do... I think had some phenomenal saves and, and saves that you watch on the broadcast and you thought the ball was at the at the back of the net, but in fact, she'd saved it. Erps, a lot of people have been critical of her this season and rightfully so, but I think when it mattered in a game like that, she showed up. She put on some crucial saves and I think had she not done some of those saves, I think the storyline would be a little bit different. So this Chelsea United game was a game where a team really stepped it up, had, I think, arguably their best attacking performance and defensive performance all season was able to withstand that ridiculous pressure and ton of shots coming in from Chelsea which is something that a lot of teams crumble against their question will be now is how do we replicate this in the final we were aggressive uh, some of the players stepped up we were making the most out of our possession on the ball we defended brilliantly and they were brave in the back Again, all of these factors were like completely absent altogether in United season for Chelsea I mean two weeks ago we were looking at the fact that they could be getting a quadruple and now you know you've got the WSL and the Champions League both of which are not guaranteed a country cup final loss to, to Arsenal which was such a fun phenomenal game but but also, um, you know, qu quite a scary game in terms of what we saw with Freedom on him. And it kind of reminded us that football really isn't that important after all. You know, that happened a few weeks. So that's not the topic of the day. But back-to-back -back defeats in, in big cups like this is also not something that Chelsea have recently dealt with. I mean, you're specifically talking about the FA Cup and the Continental Cup. They actually almost shadowed what we had seen from United with certain players not doing their job. They'll be disappointed to not have converted another shot from the many shots that they had. They'll be very frustrated to know that some of the plays in the final third were a little bit wasteful. Uh, but they'll also be very frustrated with the officiating. The officiating this year in the FA Cup, the Continental, Continental Cup and the WSL has been very, very frustrating to watch. I hate the fact that I am sitting here talking about officiating when we just witnessed such a fun, great game for a neutral. I don't want that to be the conversation following a, a big game like this. But unfortunately, it's been a consistent pattern that we keep seeing over and over and over again. And don't even get me started with, with the whole Myra Ramirez treatment that she's getting from the officials. I'm not going to sit here and make assumptions um, of differential treatment, but the pattern of questionable decisions around the, the contact fouls that she's been included in is honestly abysmal. Officials have many duties on the pitch, but one of them, and a very important one, is actually protecting those players with the decisions that they make. When a player bodies the hell out of Ramirez and, and the ref doesn't even bat an eye on it, of course that player is going to go back and hit Ramirez again. Like, players getting away with fouls like this, Ramirez being kind of targeted in some ways because players know that they're if they're you know, possibly having a foul on her, they're not going to get called on it. It's just, it's risky. It's unsafe for a player like Ramirez, but it's also just not cool to see in the game. There was a possible handball shout from Zellum. Um, there was, again, that Ramirez push in the box. The officiating was poor. And that is something to be addressed at the end of the season, which I'm sure we'll have a big conversation on. Like, it, it was, VAR was there, but is that the solution if officials are the ones making the decision? I think that's also one thing that always comes up in the in the conversation. It's like, oh, we need VAR, but it's like, 
it's the same officials making those decisions. I really hope um, in the final we, we don't have to sit and talk about the officiating. I hope it's it's a game that's appropriately and, and fairly um, done where we're not having to talk about these ridiculous decisions following a final because it will be a historic final with a, a totally new team crowned. Tottenham Hotspurs. Honestly, I've really, really enjoyed their story this season. <laughs> From a relegation battle last season to some Great, fun performances this season, including a North London Derby win. Now making it into their first FA Cup final. I love what Robert Villaham is building. I actually spoke to the head coach not too long ago in the January break um, about his styling technique and, and how he conducts a new team like this and a team specifically that was in a relegation battle and he's dealing with a lot of different players. So if you've not checked that out, I would recommend you do because um, you definitely want to get to know a little bit more about Villaham and, and just the, the man behind this kind of revolutionized new looking like Spurs team. Their game against Leicester City was a little bit closer than I anticipated it being purely because of the managerial sacking of Willie Kirk that's happened recently after he was um, found to have a, a relationship with one of his players. That's not news that a squad takes lightly um, and when you have a sacking that happening at this time of the season like it's a little bit hard to take on and we've seen instances like this where the effects have been clear on a squad but they looked very sharp they looked very composed and they looked very calm which kind of surprised me a little bit because this is a pretty big occasion they were going into you know enemy ground in terms of this was at the the um, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium but they showed that they were dangerous when they were on the ball they showed that they can penetrate they showed that they were quick on the transition um, which is something that some teams have struggled a little bit to counter Tottenham with Rantala with one hell of a screamer in that 12th minute to lead for Leicester and for them it kind of looked like they slipped in a little bit more of a defensive mode once they got that goal Jessica Naz is having a brilliant season but was also very dangerous across the game and for her to get that equalizer in the 83rd minute it was kind of deserved for both her and Spurs but what did it in the latter stages of the game was that the freshness and the quality of players that Spurs were able to have off the bench compared to Leicester's to be able to bring in Kit Graham Charlotte Grant and Matilda Weinberg off the bench you know in kind of that 80th minute that's a solid set of players you're bringing in. You're going to extra time, fatigue starts to settle in, nerves of the fact that this could be going to a penalty shootout. Um, but again, I do think it's a beautiful story of how it's Martha Thomas who's done this, who's kind of revolutionized and re-energized her confidence and career now with this move to Spurs. She can very much be the one to put that devastating dagger in United's hearts next month and win it for Spurs. That would be such a great villain story. Um, Drew Spence, I thought, was a player who did phenomenally she was so composed and calm and like had no nerves she's a veteran of the league she's a veteran in the sport like she's been in big tough situations having played as many years as she did with Chelsea but that experience that we talk about and that intelligence that we talk about was very bluntly clear and what's actually very devastating about this is that Grace Clinton will not be able to play against United obviously she's on loan um, from United to Spurs has been such a joy to watch developing so impressively uh, i mean has been a very important player for spurs in their run to this in just their overall season it's a huge bummer for the youngster who is has qualified for their for her first ever final but this is also a bummer for spurs that they'll have to work around she hasn't rested much i mean she's played seven domestic games she's played 16 games in the wsl there's not been a lot of times where grace clinton was not having an impact on Spurs' team. So I think this will be a bit of a puzzle now for Robert Verlam to to work with and fix. It was great to see the turnout um, at the Tottenham Spurs, over 18,000 that were there. Leicester City even provided some of their supporters traveling buses, um, which is something that we've seen in the women's game lately. And it's awesome because away fans are super important in a game like this. Not only is it special for the team, but for the fans who have been with the team for so long. The FA Cup happening in Wembley is exciting. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm super pumped to see how two new teams work in marketing such a, a, a game and a fixture and what the ticket um, allocation would be like and what just the overall distribution would be like. The last few years when we've seen new records hit is because it's the Chelsea, the Arsenal and the Manchester City making it. Um, but that won't be the dialogue. And I think this is a bit of a challenge now for both the league and obviously the, the FA for, you know, the organizers of this, but also the teams on how they will market this and how many fans they can pack in. Um, I'm pumped for that new matchup. Let me know what you thought of United's 
big win. Chelsea's defeat. Is this a bit of a worry now? Is is this what people have been coining the downfall of Chelsea? For reference, I don't think so. I think they've had a lot of things to deal with in terms of injuries. They've had a lot of new players coming in. I, I think that's something that's been kind of dismissed in terms of they've had to incorporate a lot of new players in a squad. They've been quite busy in terms of fixtures and that big cloud of Emma Hayes' leaving has certainly affected the team. Um, it'll always be interesting to talk about what if they didn't announce this until the end of the season? What if they announced this towards the latter stages of the season? Um, there'll always be questions around that. I don't know. I don't think we'll be able to answer them, but no, this is not the downfall of Chelsea in my opinion. But what, are, what do you think of Chelsea's performance um, against United and their loss uh, to Arsenal two weeks before? Can they bounce back? Can they somehow make a, a, I don't know, like a miracle of a run? In the Champions League, if if they are to win it, can this be their time? Let me know your thoughts, opinions on both of these fixtures. Are you excited to watch that final with new finalists? Because we're finally going to get some new blood in here and it's going to be exciting. Now, like I promised, school will be wrapping up very, very soon. And I will be back to uploading a lot of content. So to stay updated and to continue enjoying the beautiful game, make sure you subscribe to me here on YouTube and follow me on Twitter. And I will see you later.